We are in week seven of the One Story Plan, and if you're following along with the One Story Calendar, today we're talking about day number 36. I really enjoyed today's special guests, and I can't wait for you to meet them. We hope you enjoy this week's podcast. Two, three, four. What's up, guys? This is Kyler, and we are back with the Grace Kid Podcast. And today, I have two very special guests with me, my friends, and they are going to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is David. I'm nine and a half years old. My half birthday was yesterday, and I'm in fourth grade, and my favorite color is blue. Oh, and we have his brother with him. My name is Lucas. I'm seven years old, and I'm in first grade, and my favorite color is red. Oh, and what are you wearing today? Red. That's right, that's right, that's right. And so, as usual, when we start off our podcast, we have a question of the day. And so, Lucas, what is our question of the day? If you become your class's teacher for for a day, what would you teach in your class? All right, so talk with whoever you're listening to this with, and we will be right back with our answer. And we talked about what we would teach if we were the teachers for a day. And so, David, what would you teach if you're the teacher for a day? I would uh, teach sports trivia and facts. Mm. And do, do you have any, like, facts or trivia for us today? Um, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar has the most points in all time in the NBA. And Stephen Curry has the most threes in the NBA of all time. He broke that record in early December. Ooh, and who was he playing? Do you remember? The Knicks. That's right. Yeah, sweet man. I would, I would love to take your class, David. That'd be, that'd be pretty good. All right, Lucas. What would you want to teach if you taught your class? I would teach like robotics and then like battle bots and stuff. Ooh, man, that'd be a really fun first grade class. Mm-hmm. Would you just like build them or like compete and battle them? Build them and then after we build them, then battle. Yeah, <laughs> then battle. <laughs> Yeah, and I was I was joking with David and Lucas that I'll probably teach the burping ABCs or I don't, I don't know if I would actually want to do that. I'll probably do like maybe world geography or recess all day. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that. All right. Well, uh, today, if you listened to our podcast last week, uh, you kind of have a clue into what we're talking about today. So we are going to do a drum roll. Today we are talking about the story story of of Jacob Jacob and Esau, Esau, part two. two. That's right, part two. And so last week, if you listened, um, you learned about Jacob and Esau and the birthright that Jacob kind of stole from Esau. And we talked about how deceiving is wrong and it doesn't glorify God. And God doesn't want us to lie or cheat or steal. And, And that's what Jacob did. He stole it away. But we also learned that uh, God can use us even in in our mistakes. And so to get caught up to where we are today, we're jumping a little further ahead, but we're still talking about Jacob. And so Jacob, he gets married. He has lots of kids. His wealth starts to increase. He's getting richer. And then he runs for his life. Okay, this guy was after him. And then he makes a treaty with that guy, which then gets us to where we are in our story. And so David. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we're, where we are. He told them, Give this message to my master Esau. Humble greetings from your servant Jacob. Until now I've been living with Uncle Laban. And now I own cattle, donkeys, flocks of sheep, and goats. And many servants, both men and women, have sent these messengers to inform my lord of me, my coming, hope, hop, hoping that you will be friendly to me. After delivering the message, the messengers returned to Jacob and reported, We met your brother Esau, and he's reported already on his way to meet you with an army of 400 men. 
Okay, so Jacob sends messengers to his brother Esau, and he goes for a friendly greeting. What? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think 400 men or an army is a friendly greeting. Is that a friendly greeting to you guys? No. 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 Like when we all, when you guys got here, we did like fist bumps and we were like, hey, what's up? He's like, no, let's get some people ready for war. That's not a good greeting, is it? No. (laughs) No. And so, anyway, Jacob freaks out a little bit. Lucas, what does Jacob do? Jacob is terrified and he makes a plan. He makes three groups to deliver gifts to Esau. Yeah, that's right. So he ends up splitting up the group like these these gifts. He like, uh, have you guys ever gotten presents before? Yeah. 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 And like when someone uh, like, is it better to get one, one big gift at one time or like a, a couple like in a row? A couple. Yeah. You like a couple in a row? Mm, That's maybe just one big One big gift. one? Yeah. So Jacob, he comes up with this idea that I'm going to send a bunch of like cattle. He's like, I'll send 200 female goats and 20 male goats. Would you guys like 200 female goats? No. <laughs> I don't even know what I would do with them. They wouldn't fit in my apartment. No way. But he sends all these gifts. And he knows, he tells all the, the three people who were leading these like groups of gifts, I guess, that uh, he goes, when my brother Esau meets you, he will ask. He already knows what he's going to say. He's going to ask, where are you going? Who owns these animals? And whose servants are you? And so, David, how did he reply? They belong to your servant Jacob, but they are a gift for his master Esau. Look, your servant Jacob is right behind us. Yeah, so he keeps on. They, like, point back. They're like, oh, yeah, he's coming behind us. He's coming behind us. And then the third time he says, Jacob is right behind us. And so Jacob had this idea. He's going to send all these gifts to appease uh, Esau. He's, like, going to try to, like, reconcile, make better with these gifts. So hopefully these 400 people don't kill him. And so, anyway, so then he splits his family kind of in half, and then he ends up wrestling with God overnight. Have you guys ever wrestled before? Oh, yeah. Have you guys ever wrestled all night long, though? No. And have you guys ever wrestled God? No. No, I I couldn't even imagine. I get so tired wrestling, like, with my friends or, or like, my my dad or my brother. Like, it is exhausting. I couldn't imagine wrestling all night long. But God touches Jacob's hip. And it pops out of socket, like dislocates. And Jacob walked for a limp for the rest of his life because he was touched by God. But God blessed him. And so then Jacob looked up at and saw Esau coming with his 400 men. And so, uh, David, what happens in Genesis 33, verse 3 and 4, what happens when Jacob starts walking that way? Then Jacob went on ahead as he approached his brother. He bowed to the ground seven times before Then Esau ran to meet him and embraced him, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they both swept. Mm. So they was like, like initially Esau was like ready for battle, but that's not how he he responded in the end, was it? No, No. it wasn't. Yeah, he like ran and embraced him. He gave him like a big hug. He threw his arms around his neck and they wept together. They cried like they were, they were almost maybe so happy that they were kind of sad or like they like had uh, forgiven each other and that they were like just being being together was like super emotional and really cool and so it makes me think this whole story um, how does it apply one like maybe what does it tell us about God or two what does it teach us so uh, David how does it apply to our lives so it's apologize and ask for forgiveness mm. Yeah, that's good. Like, if we've done something wrong, we should apologize, ask for forgiveness, and, like, maybe try to make it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, I think there's a really cool piece of also, like, uh, knowing that you did something wrong and trying to do it right. And so, um, Lucas, what is our challenge for our people listening? If you've done something wrong in the past, apologize, ask for forgiveness, and try to... make it right yeah I'm trying to make it right yeah that's great yeah and so I think that is a great uh, something that you guys can do and so with that that comes in the, to the end of our podcast and so to all of our listeners thanks for listening we hope you enjoyed this episode 
and we will say bye. Let's go, cheese. If you would like more resources regarding the One Story Plan, go to visitgracechurch.com backslash one story. And if you'd like more resources for your kids, you can go to visitgracechurch.com backslash kids. We also have a YouTube channel, and you can find it by searching Visit Grace Kids on YouTube. If you like this podcast, we would love for you to like, subscribe, share, and leave us a comment. We'll see you soon.